Hey expats and travelers alike, today we're here to talk about expat life in Oslo. We've broken it down into three parts, moving, living, and working. I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee. And this is our Review Preview Show. It was a close race this poll between Oslo and Osaka, but Oslo ended up being the winner. So let's go ahead and start with moving to Oslo. Oslo is quite an interesting city as it's a mix of big city life combined with green spaces. So it's possible to feel like you're in a big city, but also get an urban suburban feel. Let's give you a quick little history. Oslo has been Norway's capital since 1814, the same year it gained its independence. Everyone knows that Norway is known for Viking history, which is a pretty cool history. Now unfortunately, there was a fire in Oslo in 1624 that pretty much destroyed the city and it had to be rebuilt. It was rebuilt and the city was actually named Christiana, then eventually changed to Oslo in 1925. Before you move there, you'll definitely want to know what you're getting yourself into when it comes to the weather. Having been to Oslo, it was quite cold and rainy when we were there, but while we were researching the climate throughout the year, we were shocked that we found out that Oslo can be quite warm at times because of the Gulf of Mexico. That's right, the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, when I read that, I was like, no way. I grew up in Florida on the Gulf side in Tampa, and Tampa is nowhere near Oslo, so how in the world does the water from there actually make it that far northeast? Well, it does because of the Gulf Stream, so how crazy is that? So because of this Gulf Stream, summers can get up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So okay, not quite Florida summer weather, but kind of warm for the location of Oslo. Well, that's the summer, but what about the winter? Cold, as in 10 degrees Fahrenheit cold. Since it gets so cold, expect a lot of snow. Now, the plus side of this is the winter activities. There's lots of skiing, ice skating, winter sports, and more. Before you move to Oslo, prepare for cold weather in the winter, but more pleasant temperatures in the summer. The snow definitely makes for beautiful scenery as well, especially since Oslo is situated between forests and mountains. Now, although it's Norway's capital, it's not necessarily densely populated. There are around 700,000 people. There are lots of little islands around that are connected by bridges and ferries. The city is split up into 15 districts, so as you research where to live, be sure to check out the vibe of the different neighborhoods. The city center is full of restaurants, bars, and historical things. The main street is around Karl Johans Gate. If you're interested in art galleries and museums, check out this district. The neighborhood also has good shopping and Oslo's Opera House. This district is also good if you're into history. Here you'll get to experience older buildings, so if you enjoy that type of history, this area is for you. Now let's talk about living in Oslo. Oslo has a lot to offer for locals and expats alike. Like we said before, it's not a huge city, but boasts great mix of nature and metropolis. The city is clean, but is definitely known for being pricey. A one bedroom apartment in the city center can cost around $1,400, while a three bedroom in the city averages $2,200. If you move a little further out of the city center, you can get a one bedroom for $1,000 and a three bedroom for $1,800. A meal at an inexpensive restaurant will cost you almost $20, and a three-course meal for two at a mid-scale restaurant, around $85. Getting a pint could be 10 bucks, a coffee, five bucks, so it's pretty expensive. Yeah, it's, it's, it's expensive. The city is well-connected with buses, trams, a metro, trains, and ferries, and it's split into different zones depending on where you're going will depend on how much you pay. A single journey ticket in zone one is $4, a 365-day ticket, so a year ticket just for zone one is a whopping $840. So be sure that you budget accordingly for your transportation. Those transportation costs are crazy. And keep in mind, it costs more when you get out of that zone one area. Let's go ahead and move on to healthcare. Norway has a really high healthcare standard, whether that's public or private. As an expat working in Norway, you contribute to the national insurance scheme, which gives you public healthcare. You can choose to go private, but the national insurance scheme won't cover this. There are loads of things to do in Oslo, from museums about Vikings to parks. A modern place to check out is the Opera House. It's right on the water and the architecture is super unique. You can of course check out the restaurant and bar scene as well, but remember, it's not cheap. Before we talk about working in Oslo, we want to take a minute to give a few shout outs to those of you who are commenting on our channel and Instagram. Shout outs! We had some great comments over the past two weeks. People are really digging into the comment section, asking great questions, and our viewers are giving fantastic answers. We love and encourage that. Our first comment comes from Annie Lynn. Is Portugal open to diverse people like New York City? While Portugal as a whole doesn't have as much diversity as New York City, Portuguese people are very friendly, and in bigger cities like Lisbon and Porto, they're used to seeing people from all over. 
What do you expats and travelers think about Portuguese openness to diversity? Leave your comments in the comment section. On our recent video about living in Berlin, one of our subscribers, a frequent commenter, good to see you again, 2001 Alexa Lyons, said, I have some good friends in Berlin. While the Germans can be perceived as cold and unfriendly, they are actually not that way once you get to know them. And then this commenter goes on to say that connecting via hobbies is a great way to meet people. Finally, KBKESQ asks if we've renounced our US citizenship, and if not, how hard is it to file taxes and maintain status in the US? I do our taxes and next year I'm going to have an expat tax professional do it because it's become more time consuming and I'm pretty sure that I'm not getting the best return that, that we could. Uh, we just shot a video with Steven who is a tax professional that has helped several of our friends in Singapore and we're going to pay his company to do our taxes. We haven't renounced our citizenship and haven't even thought about it. By and large, our income from working abroad is U.S. tax exempt due to the foreign earned income exclusion. That video that Josh mentioned explains more about that. And the other part of the question was, are we expats because we're concerned about the U.S. economy? Absolutely not. We love the U.S., but we find our life abroad to be more interesting and exciting, so we want to continue living overseas for that reason. Our last shout out is a special one and it goes to The Natural. The Natural has been a subscriber of ours for over two years. The comment came on Aaliyah's video about living in Cairo and it says, nice, more videos like this. We're humbled by comments like this, especially from our subscribers. Let us know why you like this video by commenting and we'll make more about it. We want to create what you like. Absolutely. Well, let's get to working in Oslo. Oslo is packed with fantastic opportunities across many different industries. Yeah, and it's buoyed by a strong economy too. Norway's economy is diverse and has one of the highest GDPs in the region. Oslo makes up 17% of Norway's national GDP. How about some of the industries that expats can find themselves in? As you all know, Oslo is located close to the sea. Thus, the maritime industries are strong here. Yeah, that's right. And Norway's history is really tied to the sea and its ports. There are over 20,000 people employed in the maritime industry in Oslo. There are so many sub-sector maritime jobs, we're going to list them here. Here are some companies you can look into working for in these sub-sectors. We can't leave out the port. Oslo has a very important seaport that's home to many companies and they greet millions of passengers per year traveling by boat to Norway. Yeah, and beyond all things water, the R&D industry is also noteworthy. There's certainly a focus on energy production and I lied about leaving the water because we're going to be talking about hydropower and offshore petroleum here. Go figure. There are plenty of research institutes for renewable energy located close to the University of Oslo. Here are some other institutions in the field of R&D. Check them out. Two more industries to know about are technology and communications. There are several startup businesses in Oslo in this industry, but you can also find large corporate employers like Google and Microsoft too. Norway is known for its developed mobile market and due to the strength of the R&D industry here, tech and communications allow a lot of synergy to take place. So who should you be looking at working for, you might ask? I'll throw a few companies at you. Kongsberg Gruppen Nordic Semiconductor and Telnor, which is the most popular telecommunications provider in Norway. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date on what's happening in the world of expats everywhere. So on that note, let's quickly let you know what is happening in our world. One of the great expat cities that you voted on was Edinburgh, and we were able to interview Ashley, who was an expat there. We just posted that video last Sunday, so be sure to check it out. We also recently had an interview with Nina, who was an expat in Chile. I did an interview that any expat who is a U.S. citizen must see. Steven is a financial planner who knows what he's doing when it comes to U.S. taxes, and he sat down with me to answer the commonly asked questions we as expats have about filing our U.S. taxes. Do we have to file as expats? The answer is definitely yes, and Steven explains that and way more in this great interview. Coming up, we have interviews about Turkey, Nairobi, information on what Josh and I are doing as we try to move abroad, and more. So make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you can see what's going on. We are now moving on to the letter P. So if you're a subscriber, be sure to head over to the Community tab page to vote for the next city. If you're not a subscriber, what are you doing? Click the subscribe button and make your vote count. Remember, we post these videos every other Thursday that's all for this review preview show. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.